Darwin. Winning. Darwining, a game of survival of the fittest species through population increase, evolution of traits, and adaptation to the environments, as well as being well positioned on the food chain, all accomplished with the trick-taking card game mechanic. Designed by the Multamaki family and published by Dragon Dawn Productions, Darwining is playable by two to six players, ages nine and up, and plays in about an hour. Let's set up for a three-player game. Set up the food chain track in the middle and allow each player to randomly draw a species board which is placed before them. Each player then chooses which of these player markers will represent them on the food chain track, checks their position on their player board here, and places the marker accordingly. Now take a number of population markers as indicated on the player board here. Start the first era by dealing out five environment cards and placing them near the food chain track for all to see. Deal each player a hand of 10 trait cards, and all players may then discard up to two cards from their hand. Now the game can begin. The player who is lowest on the food chain decides which player will start. Players use their hand of cards to take tricks. The trait cards come in three suits, acorns, berries, and flowers, and are numbered 1 to 15 twice. Use this player aid to help determine the most powerful combinations. Single cards are worth only their face value. A pair is two cards with the same number and beats a single card. A flush is three cards of the same suit and beats a pair. A straight is three cards of different suits in numeric order and beats a flush. Three of a kind beats a straight. A straight flush is three cards of the same suit in numerical order and it definitely beats three of a kind. And finally, four of a kind beats all other combinations. The starting player can choose to play a combo or just a single card. The next player must now trump the first player by playing equal or better than the previous player. Combos must be of equal or higher sum than the previously played combo. So this flush of 9, 7, 2 equals 18. The next player can play another flush of 11, 4, 3, which also equals 18, but now trumps the first flush. If you cannot play better than what was previously played, then you simply play one single card from your hand. Don't even worry about following suit. The winner of the trick uses one of the cards they played to improve their species, and all other cards are discarded. The winner of the trick then starts a new trick and play continues in this way until one player plays their last card. That is the final trick of this era. The winner of this final trick does not get to use any card to improve their species, but instead every other player uses a card to improve their species. Each card has three out of four possible improvements that can be used. Place the card around your species board to indicate which improvement you are using. Placing at the top of your species board will move you up the food chain. The number in the plate indicates how far up you move. If the space is occupied already, then move to the next open spot. If you are in spaces 1 through 5, you get the small animal bonus, which adds one more point of movement up the food chain. So a 2 here means a movement of 3 here. Place the card here on the right side and increase your population by 1 if there's a single, or 2 if there's a double. Take population markers to show the increase. Adapt to more environments by placing cards with the environment icon here on the left of your species board. You're not allowed to adapt to the same environment that you've already adapted to. Finally, gain a trait by putting a card into one of the five spaces at the bottom of your species board. All of the species have one or two starting traits. You can have up to five traits in total, and you can replace existing traits by simply discarding an old trait or covering up a starting trait. Traits have a number of effects which are outlined with these icons and explained in detail in the rule book. The last trick signifies the end of the current era. Now it's survival time. To survive, your population needs to eat. If there isn't enough food to feed your entire population, you lose one of your population. If you have more food than your population requires, you gain one population. If you have just enough food, then you neither gain nor lose population. How do you get food? In two ways. First, by being well adapted to the environments of the current era. And second, by eating other species which are lower than you on the food chain. Check the environment cards which were brought out at the beginning of this era. Compare that to the environments that you are adapted to, either on your species board or on the cards you upgraded your species with. 
The environments on your species board have a number of food icons in them. If they match the environments of the current era, you get that much food. Every card used to upgrade your species that matches the current environments will give you two food. If that isn't enough food to feed your population, then you can possibly eat other species which are lower than you on the food chain. Each species you eat gets a bite marker and that player puts it on her species board here. You can eat multiple species and each one you eat gives you two food. After all species have eaten, all players with two or more bite markers lose one population. Return all of the bite markers back to the supply. Players may keep up to two cards from their previous round or discard them all. Now reshuffle all of the discarded trait cards and deal each person back up to ten cards. Reshuffle all of the environment cards and deal out four new ones for the second era or three new ones if it's the third era, then play as before. Now just what is on those trait cards you use to improve your species? Some traits like teeth allow you to eat species higher than you on the food chain. Some traits such as hard shell, camouflage, or poison make you difficult to eat for predators. Traits such as tools, bigger brains, or iron stomach allow you to overcome those hard shells, camouflage, and poison. And food storage gives you food to eat each era. There are many different kinds of traits to choose from, but you can never use the same trait twice. At the end of the third era, the game is over after the survival phase. Now it's time to add up your score. Your final position on the food chain scores you that many points. Score one point for each population up to your starting number. Score two points for each population above the starting number. Score one point for each environment on your species board, plus two points for each environment adaptation you added to your species during the game. The traits that you've added from cards with a 1 to 9 score 1 point each. The cards from 10 to 15 score 3 points each. The starting traits don't score, and the trait that you placed in this zero point slot does not score. Highest score wins! In the case of a tie, the player with the highest population wins. Still a tie, the player who is highest on the food chain wins. That's a quick overview of how to play Darwining. Play this video for your game group before starting the game. It will provide them with a good idea of how to play before they begin their first game. Check out the other games I've covered in my channel and subscribe if you like what you see. Don't forget to click the bell to be notified when I upload a new video. Thanks for watching and stay animated!